Welcome back to Hard Run Box. Today it's time for a long overdue project, something that really couldn't have waited any longer. It's time for me to finally ditch my crappy Intel-based home storage server and replace it with something Ryzen. In the last year or so, it's really become apparent how pathetically slow my server is and with all the spare hardware we find ourselves with at Hard Run Box, it just, yeah, it doesn't really make any sense to use something so garbage for any longer. So let's take a look at my old server hardware, which is, yeah, sitting right here in front of me. And this is what I've been using for quite some time now. And yeah, we'll break it down and have a look at this just before we get into, yeah, what we're gonna be replacing it with. So firstly, there are two things, main things that I use my storage server for. One is simple archival storage for hardware unbox projects. My current setup has the last year's worth of stuff. So everything from 2019 stored directly in my main workstation PC. So that's the Threadripper build we showed on the channel a little while back. And this allows for the fastest and cleanest access to projects that are most likely to need access to such as b-roll for hardware released over the last year and any current projects that i'm working on and then anything from previous years is stored in this storage server obviously there's no hard drives attached but normally there would be and then i can access it over my home network and it's not clogging up you know a bunch of drive bays in my main system the other thing i use the server for is transcoding the project files down from the raw source videos which can be 100 to 200 megabits per second uh, down to a lower bitrate file which retains most of the quality or at least enough quality for YouTube and uses a lot less space. So having this task run on the server and not on my main Threadripper machine frees up my workstation for actually editing these videos you see on the channel as well as gaming and other stuff. But yeah, the hardware here, at least in 2019, is laughably bad for these tasks. Now, to be fair, I did get these components before the release of AMD's Ryzen series in early 2017. If I built this in 2017, I probably would have used that. But yeah, still these days, this is just so slow. So the first issue is the CPU, and it's and it's almost embarrassing to say it's an Intel Core i5 2400S, which I picked up on eBay secondhand for some very low price, you know, in the low you know 50 bucks or something like that. Now this is a Sandy Bridge processor built on 32 nanometer with just four cores and four threads, but it's no unlocked Core i5 2500K. Now this is the locked S model from one tier down, so it comes with you know a lower TDP of just 65 watts instead of 95 watts and that means a base clock of just 2.5 gigahertz across those four cores with a turbo up to 3.3 gigahertz now I recently wanted to change up the transcoding a little bit and switch from using H.264 to the newer and more efficient H.265 or HEVC, which means better quality from the same bitrate. Uh, and I tested a few things out on my Threadripper system to dial in the quality, but then when actually deploying this to the server it was going to be run on with the, yeah, the Core i5 2400S, it basically just gave up. I mean, yeah, it's, it's really very, very slow transcoding one and a half minutes of B-roll into my desired H.265 quality took more than 30 minutes at a pathetic 1.35 FPS. And for any given project, I might have 20 to 30 minutes of B-roll to transcode. So the storage savings are insanely good, but that sort of processing speed, you know, just can't really stomach. It'd take almost a day just to transcode one project on this server. And on top of that, you'll see I've been using the crappy Intel box cooler, which makes the whole system quite loud. And even worse, the system is configured with just four gigabytes of DDR3 1333 in mismatched sticks. So yeah, it has slow memory that's easily filled up. For example, the system chokes to a halt performing any sort of backup work or large file copies. And then if I'm trying to run a transcode while also maintaining decent file access speeds, yes, yeah, it's just a nightmare. Uh, the storage situation is at its limit too, thanks to my motherboard choice. We've got an ASUS H61M-A slash USB 3, which I also picked up for some bargain price a couple of years ago. Uh, the problem with this board in 2019, yeah, there's numerous problems. Firstly, there's just four SATA ports and SATA three gigabit ports, no less. So the SSD I use for booting is speed limited due to the slow SATA port speed. <laughs> slow SATA port speed, bit of a tongue twister there. And then yeah, only having three other ports for hard drives simply isn't enough anymore. Really no room to move into 2020 with this server hardware. Next year I want to store projects for that year on a new drive. I need a fifth storage bay in the server for that and yeah, it's just no more room available. The board also only has two rear USB 3.0 ports, so no ability to have fast front USB access. It lacks Basically any other modern convenience, no USB-C, no M.2 slots, very limited PCIe capabilities. Yeah, the time for this thing is up. So 
For the new Ryzen storage server build, none of these components are being retained except for the hard drive. Mostly sticking with eight terabyte drives there, no problems for me. Everything else is getting overhauled to bring this PC up to at least some form of modern standard. The CPU is AMD's Ryzen 7 2700X, so yeah, I know it's not the latest Ryzen 3000 series CPU. Unfortunately for me, I don't have any spare third gen Ryzen CPUs right now. The ones I do have kind of need those for testing, and let's be honest, benchmarks are more important than having a third gen Ryzen CPU in my storage server. So for now, the Ryzen 7 2700X will have to do, although because we're on the AM4 platform, yep, I still do have the opportunity to upgrade that to even something like a 16 core processor down the line if I need it. The 2700X is naturally going to be a massive massive upgrade for this server, a jump from four cores and four threads to eight cores and 16 threads is gonna immediately provide a significant boost for multi-threaded tasks like encoding and it's clocked higher, it supports faster memory, supports better features and all of that. Um, now, because X265 encoding does hit AVX a fair bit, the 2700X with the Zen Plus architecture isn't going to be as good as if I had chosen a third gen CPU like the 3700X instead. A latest generation Intel CPU would also have worked, although I didn't have any of those available either. And the 2700X I think is a better value choice for most people that if you were going to build something similar to what I'm using here, I think I'd probably still go with the Ryzen option. There are also other drawbacks like the lack of integrated graphics, which means this build needs a GPU. Right now, because I have one spare to use, I'll be using the uh, MSI GeForce GTX 1660 Aero ITX model, but I'll almost certainly downgrade this to something in the next month or so that's, you know, as crappy as a GT 1030 or RX 560 or something like that. The 2700X is also a more power hungry CPU than AMD's seven nanometer offerings, which is a minor concern given this PC runs 24 seven, but I think the performance upgrade for this task is gonna be more than worth it. The motherboard I'm using is ASRock's X570M Pro 4. And this is the only AM4 micro ATX motherboard I could find with at least eight SATA ports. Um, it would have been great if I could have used just a B450 board or something along those lines. But for this, it turns out we need to go all the way to X570 to satisfy the requirements. Luckily, the X570M Pro 4 is a neat board. It has all the bonuses that you'd want like USB-C. It's got two M.2 slots and is of course suitable for future upgrades. For memory, again, that's what I just had lying around. We've got 16 gigabytes of Team Group's DDR4 3000 CL16 stuff in a dual channel kit. It does have some RGB lighting, but that won't be seen. And as a boot drive, we have the this great little addition. This is the Seagate IronWolf 1.92 terabyte NAS SSD in a 2.5 inch form factor, which is gonna allow for some higher speed archival storage too, just in case we need that for something. Uh, and the real star of the show here is something that I wanted, which is just perfect for this build and it is the Silverstone CS381. Not going to bring it up on the desk here but we will get some b-roll in in a moment. It's a 30 litre micro ATX case with eight hot swappable 3.5 inch drive bays at the front. At my current storage server usage this should be good for at least another couple of years as I populate out all the drives. Probably we'll start here with three or four and then move up over time. The one issue for at least the short term is the Seagate 2.5 inch SSD. We'll use one of the eight SATA ports that could be used for the drive bay but this can be easily rectified in the future by swapping that to an M.2 drive. And yeah, the design here for this case isn't the most attractive, but it's really not the point. It's having those eight bays with front access, space for two additional 2.5 inch drives on the inside, micro ATX boards, full length GPU support in case I need it, and of course, plenty of optional vents. I'll get some B-roll of the inside of the case because there are a few extras we will need here. Firstly, we'll need two of Silverstone's adapter cables to take us from the mini SAS connectors on the hard drive backplane to SATA ports for the motherboard. We'll also need an SFX power supply. Silverstone have hooked us up here with their SX500G 80 plus gold rated model. And then we're also going to be height limited on CPU cooling as the drive bays sit over part of the motherboard. AMD doesn't have a suitable box cooler here. I'd love to use a Wraith cooler on the 2700X as they'd be pretty decent, but instead I'll be opting for liquid cooling in the form of Corsair's H100X. Now, generally, I wouldn't recommend liquid cooling for a server type build like this, but I want this PC to be very quiet if possible, given it will be in my sort of living area. And I think a CLC will be better here than having a low profile air cooler. And I'm willing to give it at least a bit of a try. If the cooler dies, I have really no shortage of stuff around here to replace it with at a moment's notice. So yeah, I'll monitor how it goes over time. I think it'll be fine though, but certainly if it does die, yeah, I'll let you know through something like Twitter or all of that. Um, yeah, I guess that's all the parts that we've gone through and so on. We'll do some building now, and then at the end we'll come back. I'll talk through some of the performance results and the setup and wrap it all up. So yeah, enjoy the build montage.
All right, we're back. The build is complete and it's sitting here nicely. Normally I'd say it looks pretty decent, but I'm not even gonna bother showing you inside because with those drive bays hanging over the motherboard, uh, you can't really see anything in there. Uh, no windows, no fancy lighting, nothing interesting to see really, which is yeah, what you want from a more server-oriented build. Aside from all the platform advantages I talked about earlier and the ability to now go from a maximum of three hard drives to eight, the encoding performance advantages are massive. With one minute and 30 seconds of test footage, my pre the previous Intel Sandy Bridge server was able to transcode that file in 34 minutes. Now with the Ryzen 7 2700X, we're down to seven and a half minutes. So we're more than four times faster at the encode. Now this might sound still pretty slow, but for my setup, the economics makes sense. It makes transcoding 30 minutes of B-roll, so a typical hard run box project, take under four hours compared to 17 hours with the old server. When factoring in storage costs and power costs, this means the new server costs me about 22 cents per project to transcode versus $1.30 per project to store the larger raw files. The old server consumes less power when transcoding, but was much slower, costing almost 75 cents per project for the transcode, while also making the server unusable for longer. So that's a pretty huge gain for me. And if I wanted to improve that efficiency even further and make the economics work even better and cheaper for me, I could just upgrade this to a third gen Ryzen CPU at some point when that makes sense. The build itself was pretty straightforward actually, despite the unconventional case layout. The CS381 I don't think is designed for radiators, but the 240mm rad fit neatly along the back. There was plenty of room for cable management behind the PSU, and it was overall a much simpler build process than I thought it would be. There are plenty of panels and sections you can remove, which makes easy access. And for a case that can fit eight hot swappable 3.5 inch drives plus a full length GPU, I think it's pretty compact overall. There were a few things throughout the build that I did have to do. One was orienting the PSU so that the fan was pointing upwards as opposed to downwards. Normally I like to have the fan, as most people do, intake from beneath the case, but this will be sitting on carpet and it, there's no you know, risers or anything along the bottom. So that would sit flush along with the carpet and probably choke out the PSU just in case the fan ever needed to spin up. So having it around that other orientation uh, did make a lot of sense. And again, I will hopefully be swapping out that GPU for something that's a lot less power hungry, a lot less, you know, hopefully won't even require that power cable in there, which would simplify it all a little bit. Or even if there's an APU product from AMD coming up that makes sense, even that might be able to go in something like this and yeah, be a pretty good option. So I did also have to do some tweaking in the ASRock motherboard BIOS just, just to quieten down a few of the fans here and there. But aside from that, yeah, it's ready to go. It runs pretty cool too. So yeah, that's it for this one. Hope this has been at least an interesting build project that's been a bit different from the usual gaming ones we do on the channel. As always, you can subscribe for more. Consider supporting us on Patreon or through the merch store if you want to grab something like this hoodie. And I'll catch you in the next one.